PCA, Personal Carbon Allowance. In many nations around the world, large companies already have to purchase carbon credits in order to offset the carbon they're putting out in the environment. The theory is that the more a business pollutes, the more it must pay to undo the damage. But there are many who argue that these kinds of carbon limits should be placed on individuals too. As early as 2008, the UK government was exploring personal carbon allowances for each British citizen. In Sweden, the Royal Institute of Technology is currently heavily discussing the implementation of a PCA for Swedish citizens. And in the journal Nature, they've spoken about how the governments of France and California have explored a similar personal carbon allowance as well. On its own, this sounds pretty great. Of course, we want to make people more aware of the actions that they take and how they're contributing to society and the state of the planet. Okay, so how would the government then track your individual carbon usage? Luckily, they have an answer for that already. I've spoken about this tool many times before on the channel, and it's called a CBDC, or the Central Bank Digital Currency. A central bank digital currency would be a fully digital currency just like Bitcoin. But unlike Bitcoin, it wouldn't be decentralized. Instead, a CBDC would be controlled by a nation's central bank and overseen by your government, which would give them the ability to track absolutely everything you spend your money on. But that's not the part that concerns people. One of the features of a CBDC is that you would make your money fully programmable, meaning that just like the rules of a video game, your government could put rules on how you spend your cash and potentially tell you what you can and cannot spend it on. A government controlling how you spend your money might sound a little bit far-fetched and you might be thinking that this kind of authoritarian control over your money is not going to be anything that we'll see in the future. Unfortunately, this is already implemented in the world. In China, the government is already able to program what its citizens can and cannot spend their money on. Over the last few years, they've limited millions of people's ability to buy things like train tickets, passports, and luxury goods. They're able to do this because of China's intense social credit system that links each person's identity and actions to their bank account, allowing the government to see and to control everything a citizen does with their money. And it seems like the West is paying attention. In nations like Sweden, South Africa, and Canada, trials of programmable central bank currencies are already underway. In fact, almost half of the world's nations are at some stage of implementing this kind of programmable money, meaning no matter where in the world you live, this technology is likely only a few years away. Okay, so how does programmable money tie in with the personal carbon limit? Well, it all comes down to whether or not you've gone over your monthly usage. And if you have, there are two possible case scenarios for that. The most openly talked about penalty for a person going over their individual carbon limit is that they'd simply get charged for doing so. Just the same as what happens to large companies today. Taken too many car trips this month or bought a little bit too much meat? In that case, you'd simply get a bill at the end of each month from your government so you can pay the price of being a naughty citizen. As your entire carbon usage would be tracked by a government CBDC, there would be no way to hide how much carbon you've used. And since they now also hold the keys to your money, they won't even need to send you a bill for your excess usage. Potentially, they'll just automatically pull your fine from your bank account. But there is a second, and in my opinion, a scary thing that could happen if CA, personal card. I want to start up by saying, Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawu by Shim Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawu by Shim Yaharashai, by Shim Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect, the Heavenly Father's name is Yahawu, which means he is or he exists. By Hashem in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer. He is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. By Hashem in the name of the Rukhah Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit. That's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. The so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird, looking like the other nations in your spirit, bear witness with this doctrine. You could be one elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off following after false gods and false idols, not following the law, such a commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity under our oppressors, not for our destruction, but because we moved Yahweh to anger. And through Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, we're able to have mercy in a grace period, but only the elect, only a remnant is going to be able to have the understanding to be able to endure to the end, to not bow down to this beast system, not bow down to this oppressor. Esau, Edom is our oppressor. Okay, they are the self-proclaimed white man. 
right? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Kennedys, the Soros, the Gates. These are the ones that are implementing the New World Order, Novus Order Secorium. And how they're doing it is by order out of chaos in the Latin, which means order out of chaos, problem, action, solution. And this is one of their problem, action, solution is their, uh, their carbon, okay, personal carbon allowance, where they're able to control, you know, um, basically how much you're, how much you're breathing, you know, um, you know, how many times you can drive your car a day, how much meat you can uh, use, and how they're going to control it is by their money. That's why they want to take out the, the paper dollar bringing in the central banking digital currency. And ultimately, those are all preludes to the karagma, which is a graven image in your forehead or in your hand where they can be able to implant it in you to be able to control you, to have you be a perpetual slave. And if you take that, you will get, you will, um, that, Yahabba Shemir Ashai said, if you take that, you will get a grievous sort and you will get caught up in the lake of fire. Okay, and that's what these uh, these devils these uh, um, elites, these banksters, these self-proclaimed white men, but they're actually not white. There's no such thing as black or white. They are the true red men. Okay, going back to uh, Edom, which goes back to the Greek word idumia, which goes back to red, showing you their pigmentation because of their Cain's killing their brother Abel. Okay, Cain was cursed with uh, leprosy to be translucent. Okay, showing you them to be what the true red man. And with the, them being that red man, they have they've been given uh, also a great sword, okay? They've been given the fatness of the earth, which are the best places where they're able to control the world through their uh, manipulation, through their draconian measures, through where they can put up, a, a, you know, they can put up rights, you know, bill of rights and things like that. And then they can just take them away if they want to, okay? And that's what they're doing with this pandemic treaty. Also um, the meeting over there in Davos, uh, Switzerland, where they're going to be able to, uh, they're meeting up to be able to take people's rights away. Okay. And this is another part of their, um, their, their carbon allowance. That's part of the great reset. Okay. Is to have, um, you know, people eating impossible foods, have people, uh, linked into their technology. And why are they doing this? Because they have a, a God gene. They want to be like the most high. Okay. They want, they think that they're able to be in good case where they can be able to control people, bringing forth, uh, you know, their immortality, their, their, uh, pseudoscience. Okay. But this is all going to an end because the servants of Yahabba Shem Hashai are exposing this devil, exposing Esau, Edom and making him bare because this, that's how Yahabba Shem Hashai speaks is through his prophets. And when you see the prophets on the scene, that means that this is the end of a dynasty or end of a kingdom. And that's what you're seeing right now through these devils trying to implement their, um, you know, their, their personal carbon allowance, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, having no sovereignty. Okay. They're draconian measures. And this is all part of prophecy. So we're, um, the servants of Yahabba Shema Shai should be rejoicing right now because this is the end because they're starting to come in like a madman sparing none. Because again, a lot of people are not going to conform to their, uh, their wickedness. Okay. And they know that. And that's why they have, you know, FEMA camps. That's why they have re-educational camps. That's why they have the smart guillotines. That's why they have um, these robot dogs with, with AK-47s on them. That's why they have their drones. Okay. But they don't realize that this thing is spiritual and spiritually through the scriptures, they're going to be taken out by their own swords. Okay. So this is Ezekiel 28 and two, son of man saying to Prince of Tyrus. Okay. And that's known as a modern day, uh, um, the modern day Edomite, right? The modern day white man. Thus said Yahabba Shemir Hashai, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yeah, so the, the word uh, seas goes into the uh, to the people. So the midst of the people, yet they are men and not, not God, though they set their heart as the heart of God. Yeah, so that's what they're trying to do with their, their pseudoscience. Okay, that's what they're trying to do by controlling your every movement and what you're supposed to do in this world. Okay, controlling how much... Uh, you know, food that you, intake that you eat, controlling, you know, wh who, what people you're visiting. And they're going to, the second part of this video that I have from um, that lady speaking right there is going to be talking about their, their social credit system. Okay. But they're going to do it through um, carbon, which is ultimately how they're going to be able to, if you don't bow down, they're going to call you a health risk. Okay. It says Ezekiel 28 and three, it says, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret they can hide from thee. Yeah, so they, they do a diligent search on these things that they can be able to do to the people. And when you look in a worldly sense, um, you know, people are going to fall for it. 
because they're going to say, well, you know, I just want to help the earth. You know, I want to help the earth. Meanwhile, you have the they have them shooting off um, uh, missiles. You have islands of trash. OK, you have the deforestation of, of um, you know, cutting down the trees. You have the constant um, wicked philosophies. You know, you have them spraying the chemtrails in the air. So you have all these things. But meanwhile, they're trying to say that they're going to help you. That's the problem. Actual solution. That's the wicked. Ezekiel 28 and 4. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten the riches and has gotten gold and silver into the treasures. Yeah, so they've gotten many riches of being deceitful, of taking over all these, um, you know, basically third world countries and making them part of NATO and EU and using usury, which is where they give them a bunch of money and then they can never pay it back. And ultimately they have to owe uh, Babylon the Great. And what that happens is that creates division amongst the people, which creates chaos and which that's order out of chaos. Ezekiel 28 and 5, by great wisdom and by traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Yes, yeah, so their pride is deceiving them because they think that they can be able to uh, do all these certain things and be able to control the people through their technology, through their pseudoscience. So let's get that Second Thessalonians in this because this Second Thessalonians reiterates that they have a God complex, that they want to be able to uh, sit in the seat of God, right? But we know that Yahweh Shemashai controls the left side and the right side. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except they're coming or falling away first. Okay, and that happened. We were we were put to a low estate. We didn't have the truth, right? And that was in 70 AD. And that a man of sin be revealed that the son of perdition. So the, the man of sin is being revealed right right now. That's Esau Edom. You know, your Bill Gate, the people that you see are Bill Gates, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, Elon Musk, but there's people that are in the background, okay, like, um, there's people in the background, like the, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, these are the ones, these are the banksters, these are elites, the ones that are pulling the strings of these cult of personalities that you see, and then when you go into that word perdition, it goes into destruction, and that's what they were created to do. They were created to push forth this destruction, you know, because they have a thing called uh, Georgia Guidestones, right where they want to depopulate the earth and this is one of the ways they're going to depopulate the earth because they know that a lot of people are not going to um bow down to this to the system that they're pushing because again a lot of these uh devils that are that are saying you know they want a low carbon rate or right they're using they're using boats you know yachts they're using airplanes you know even over there in um uh, geneva switzerland when they're going to these meetings they all fly up on jets OK, where they're able to use, I think it was like 600 cars or whatever, whenever they start it, whatever. It's that's all. You know, the whole point is, is that's all BS, you know, about because the, <laughs> the Lord made this place to be inhabited. OK, and made the, he made this place to, um, you know, to have people not to depopulate. He said, be fruitful and multiply. OK, just just to add on to that, because these devils, what they're trying to do is destroy the earth. Or they are, you know, going back to the son of perdition. I think that's, uh, what is that, 45 and 18? <laughs> Isaiah 45 and 18. For thus said, Yahweh that created the heavens, Yahweh himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he had created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. Yeah, so he created it to be inhabited. He didn't create it to be um what is it? It says, right, let me read this in NLT. It's for, it says, for the Lord Adawan Yahweh, and he created the heavens and earth and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. I am Yahweh Shemar Hashai. He says, and there is no other. Yeah, so there's no other, um, you know, uh, God beside him. All these gods that they worship, Baal, um, you know, uh, um, Molech. You know, um, all these gods, they're all not, they're all on the left-hand side of Yahweh Hashem Hashai. Because as it speaks about a little bit earlier, Isaiah 45 and 7, I form the light, I create the darkness, I make peace, I create evil, I, Yahweh, do all these things. Yahweh Hashem Hashai is the one that's in control of all these things. And he didn't create this land to be inhabited by a couple people, okay? <laughs> you know, he ultimately created it for Israel, you know, um, Yahweh Hashai to be the king. King of King, Lord of Hosts, you know, then you have what King David, you know, then the disciples and the men on down, 
you know, in the, and that have order. He didn't create it for Esau Edom to um, be pushing forth um, his oil, dropping oil in the ocean and all this in, uh, uh, barium, uh, aluminum in the air, uh, fluoride in your water. He didn't create it for that. He created it for, uh, you know, the apple of his eye. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called Yahweh or that is worshiped so that he is God. He's sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Yeah, so these devils um, try to present themselves as they are they are gods through their technology. But again, Yahweh Shem is the one that set them up in power, right? To ultimately to show the elect what is uh, wrong, you know, so, let me rephrase that to show us um, righteousness, you know, or to show us wickedness so we can be able to come to righteousness so we can be like our Lord omnipotent so we can know good and bad. Right. Second Thessalonians two and eight. And then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord Yaharashai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Because that's how our Lord Yaharashai speaks. He speaks through his prophets. Okay. And that's what he's speaking about, the spirit of his mouth. By brothers being on the highways and the byways, these epistles going out, exposing these devils for the wickedness that they're doing and bringing them to the light. So um, uh, the servants of Yahweh, so the, the fruits can be able to wake up. So the elect can be able to wake up so the kingdom can, can come into play. Right? Second Thessalonians 2 and 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And that's Esau, Edom, in the flesh. He's on the left-hand side, and what is he pushing? Nothing but wickedness. That's a self-proclaimed white man. He's pushing his lying wonders. And I want to get this definition because they're saying that this is going to be able to save people. You know, the carbon, they want to, uh, you know, climate change. They want to be able to uh, save the world, but that's not true, right? So this is the word pseudos. It goes into the Greek word 5579, okay? So a conscious and intentional falsehood, and right here, this is what I want to get. It says, in a broad sense, right, it says, in a broad sense, whatever is not what it seems to be. So it seems like they're trying to help and, you know, we just want to cut emissions down. We want to, you know, not have people use gas, uh, you know, gas cars. We want people to have electric cars, We, you know, but that's not what it is. It's ultimately to be in control, to be in your pockets, to control your money, Okay. Coming with those uh, lying wonders. And it speaks about that in Psalms 144. Right? Let me just get that. Because their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Psalms 144 and 8. Whose mouth speak of vanity and the right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Yes, yeah, so their mouth is what full of lies. Okay? 11. Rid me and deliver me from the hands of strange children whose mouth speak of vanity and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. And that's constantly what they're doing is, um, is speaking lies and they're able to, um, you know, go about these lies because uh, they have the power right now. They have their portion. Okay. Meanwhile, they're actually destroying the earth. That's why our Lord has to come back because, again, um, the days have to be shortened because, again, there will be no more elect to be saved. There will be no one to be here. Okay, that's how much that's how much they've <laughs> that's how good they are as far as on the left hand side of being wicked. It says Isaiah twenty four and five. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Yeah, so and what they how they change the um the ordinances, what do they have what have they done? They changed the um the certain days. We don't even know what really the day we are and how we know is through measuring the time diligently through the scriptures. Okay, they have what um, polluted the earth. You know, they have a thing called CERN where they where they pump into the ground and that creates all sorts of different vibrations. Okay, they have broken the everlasting covenant. They don't actually, um, you know, after six or six years of growing on a, on a certain land, right? The seventh year, you're supposed to let it rest. Do they do that? No, they keep pumping oil. You know, they keep, um, you know, polluting the water. Okay, again, they keep putting the chemicals in the air. Okay, they have broken the covenant with what the earth to be able to keep it going, and they don't go in order. They're not in an ordinance. They're in uh, uh, straight in wickedness. Okay, and they're able to push forth this because again they have their portion. That's why it speaks about Psalms one forty and one. <clears throat> Psalms one forty and one, and this is King David. 
you know, King David speaking and what is what is being raised up right now, the tabernacle of David. That's the righteous, right? Deliver me, O Yahweh, from the evil man. Preserve me from that violent man. And who's that violent man? That speaks about um, Esau, Edom. First Maccabees uh, 1 and 11, you know, uh, Malachi 1 and 4. Because again, who's the earth given into? Right? Let's see. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked who covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not, and where and who is he? So again, who covered the faces of the judges from the from the um, Byzantine Empire, starting in what the Renaissance uh, area period, which was in the mid 1300s, which is the Renaissance era is the rebirth of Rome 2.0. Babylon the Great is Rome 2.0, right? Um, Babylon means Babel, which means uh, confusion. And America means Amar, which means bitter. And we're in a bitter, confused state when we have, um, you know, Rome 2.0 again, because what was what was there? Nothing but man on man, woman on woman, transformers, draconian measures. OK, and nothing but wickedness. And that place was taken down and this place is going to be destroyed, too. Who covered the faces of the judges? Who covered the faces of our Lord? Our Lord, it's, it says in the scriptures in Hebrews, it says it's evident he came out the tribe of Judah, which would be a so-called black man. OK, and what did they do? They put their faces there of uh, Caesar Borgier, going back to Serapis Christi, which you now see uh, Jesus Christ today, okay? Putting forth that white image or that pale face image, long streaming, uh, long streaming white hair, uh, no, long, <laughs> long pale face um, hippie, long hair, pale face hippie, okay? And that's not how our Lord looks, okay? And who put who put that image? The the white man, the self proclaimed white man. Not the Mo, the Moabites haven't done that. Did they do that image? No. Did the um, Iranians do that? The Israelites? No. Did the uh, uh, you know the um, the Japanese, the, the Ammonites? Did they do that? No. None of these other heathen nations did that. Esau Edom did that, showing you that they are the wicked, and that's what it's speaking about. Psalms one forty and one. Deliver me, O Yahweh, from the evil man. Preserve me from that violent man. And he is a very violent man. Okay. And they have a video going around is, um, you know, there's no more crazy, uh, crazier than a white boy. And that's true because they were created to be wicked and they're profane and they're outside the temple. Let me get a scripture. This is Psalms 71 and 4. Psalm 71 and 4. Deliver me, O my power, Yahweh, out of the hand of the wicked. Out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. And that's a cruel man when he's telling you that, um, you know, you can't uh, drive somewhere. You know, you um, you can't access your bank account because, you know, you ate too much meat this month or because you, you drove too much or or even you you breathe. You, um, you know, you know, you were breathing too much this this uh, this uh, month. OK, and they're going to start enforcing that. They're going to start being more draconian as the lady spoke about, you know, China. I'm not sure if it's actually in that video. There's, I have a second part where the, uh, you know, the, the Shanghai, they're doing that, where they're doing all full control, okay? So this is Psalms 140 and 2, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Yeah, so when you go into that word heart, it goes into the Hebrew word lahab, which means continually, which uh, slaki, which means um, their mindset, okay? Their mind, how they push it. Let me, let me just get it real quick. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's in the Hebrew or the Greek. Let's see. Just real quick. Yeah, it's in the Hebrew 3820. I just want to make sure. Yeah, so uh, Lahab, right? Inner man, mind, heart, understanding. Yeah, their soul, their mind, their knowledge, their reflection, their memory. So they're conscious. So these are the things that you do on a daily basis. So if you're involved in this truth all the time, that's what you, that's, that's, basically who you are right but these these devils are involved um in violence all the time they wear it on their um you know they wear it on them like a, a jacket you know it speaks about it in psalms so psalms 140 and 2 which imagine mischiefs in their heart yeah so they imagine how to plot and do wicked things like this um personal carbon allowance that's a wicked thing you know the great reset the build back better and make america great these are wicked things and their heart continually, they are gathered together for war. Yeah, so they're constantly to gather together for war. As you um, on May twenty second, they're gathered together for the pandemic treaty. Also, you have um, them meeting up for the Great Reset meeting. 
Okay, they're all over there in Geneva and they, and they, they pull up or in Switzerland and they all pull up in their jets and their yachts. And what are they doing? Plotting together um, to do wickedness. Okay. To be able to control the whole world. Psalms uh, 56 and 6, they, they gather themselves together and aren't they gathering over there? Right. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to have, they're trying to mark your steps with a digital footprint, a digital carbon footprint. So they can be able to control your every move because it ultimately how they're going to be able to control the, the um, your carbon footprint is by putting something inside of you. And they're going to do it by these staged events, or they're going to try to do it by these staged events, but the elect is going to be able to be saved in that time. Psalms 140 and 3, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent adder's poison is under their lips. Yes. Yeah, so how do they sharpen their tongue? By their legislation. Okay. And what are they doing? They're taking away the sovereignty, which is your rights. They're taking away that and bringing in their own rights, bringing in the pandemic treaty. And what they're gonna, how they're going to do it is by calling you a health risk if you don't bow down. And, and, and if you are, um, they're going to deem you as a health risk and they'll put you in these camps and they, they have justification by that through, um, their diplomatic immunity, through them controlling, uh, with these other princes and other, um, Kings of this world. Okay. So let me get a scripture for that. Psalms 58 and two. Psalms 58 and two. Yeah. In their heart. Yeah. So the Rahab in the Hebrew you work wickedness, you weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Yeah, so in their mind, they weigh, uh, they plot um, injustices on the people. And that's one thing, injustice on the people. You know, you can't eat too much. You can't um, do, there's a whole bunch of other things that they were speaking about as a, the second video is going to speak about, right? Lord, when I get to it, it says Psalms 58 and 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. So again, the wicked are estranged from the womb. And that goes back to the Renaissance era, the mid 1300s, when they came out the, came out the uh, out of that uh, deadly womb and they started telling lies, you know, with the Renaissance era. And they brought out a uh, conoclasm, which was covering the faces of the judges. And we touched on that in uh, Job 9 and 24. And they go astray speaking lies. Yes, yeah, speaking lies that our Lord is a so-called white man. You know, um, bringing in their Roman Catholicism, bringing in their Christianity, okay, uh, saying that they are the self-proclaimed, um, um, you know, people, as far as the, the people of the Lord, saying that, that they are the saints, saying that they are the true Jews, when they're not. Those are all lies. And what do they do? They work, they um, put us in slavery and raped, robbed, and murdered our people, taking away our whole heritage, calling us bywords, okay? Those are lies. This carbon allowance thing, that's all about lies, too. Right. False, uh, false prehood, you know, for the right hand of falsehood. Psalms 58 and 4. This is their poisons like a poison of a serpent. They are like a death adder. They stop. They stop at that ear. So, again, they're venom and this is venom. They want to hit you with that, that Beetlejuice venom. And then ultimately they want to give you the karagma, which is the, the venom that you can't come back from. OK, five which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. So they won't hearken um, to the um, the prophets. They're not going to hearken to the prophets. What they're going to do is call that misinformation and disinformation. Why? Because they are the wicked. Right? Psalms 140 and 4. Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have have proposed to overthrow my goings. Yes, yeah, so overthrow uh, your ways. How are they going to overthrow your ways? By changing your... um changing your God gene, okay, changing your, your penal gland, okay, by making you a, a, a cyborg, making you a GMO baby, basically, because again, you're, you're not going to be the, the same person that you were, you're going to be controlled, and they have, and that stuff can be able to track you, the carbon, it can track you no matter where you go, okay, so you'll have no rest, as a, um, Lord willing, I bring it out, in Sirach 28, it speaks about that, that you will have no rest day or night, because you, you have taken that, and I'll speak about that in Revelation um, 16. Okay. And that means we have a, a scripture. Because again, King David spoke about this. This is Psalm 17 and 8. Yeah, Psalms, yeah, Psalm 17 and 8. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. And that's that refuge. Okay, that's that shelter that speaks about in Psalms 91. And we're praying that the Lord puts that hedge, 
hedge on us to be able to protect us from the, from the said perils that are about to happen. The um, you know, you have the Slakia, you have them coming in uh like like a madman spirit nun from the bloodshed, strife, calamity, you know, the tribulation, the famine. Okay, all these things are coming, uh, coming, and we're praying that the the shadow, which is the angels that are be able to hide us from the wickedness that's coming. Okay, and the elect are going to be um, going to have that shelter. Psalm 17, we're praying that we're of that number. Psalm 17 and 9, from the wicked that oppress me from a deadly enemies who can pass me about. And that's what they're going to be doing. They're going to be compassing us about on all ends. Because again, there's going to be, um, they're going to be coming into people's houses. That's why it speaks about, and um, the apographer, it speaks about be as a pilgrim. You know, be, be ready to lose everything at a, at a second's moment. You know, to be on the move. Just like our Lord Yahweh Shai was always on the move. He didn't have a place uh, to live, okay? Um, I think he said uh, foxes have holes, you know, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no has no place, right? Roughly paraphrasing that. So how much more is servants? Because, again, these devils are going to start um, compassing us, and the Lord is going to put that spirit on us to go certain places to lift up that standard for his elect. Psalm 17 and 10 they are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. And that's what they're doing is speaking proudly because they want to uh, control you by every, you know, how much you eat, you know, where you drive to and what you do. Okay. So Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay. And that's what we're praying that Yahweh Shem is able to protect us from the said pearls that are about to happen. Okay. Which is that sword, which is that, um, that rod of uh, Yahweh Shemashai's anger. Two thirds of our people are not going to be able to escape that sword. Okay, Psalms 140 and 5. The proud have hid a snare for me, and cords they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. Yes, yeah, so they have set traps um, for um, you know for the people. But starting with the starting with the two thirds, they have set traps, and one of these traps is going to be um, people can uh, people um, bowing down to this beast system. Okay, because again, how are they going to emphasize it? By buying and selling. You're not going to be able to go in certain places if you don't have this uh, carbon footprint. Okay, which is ultimately leading to the, the karagma, right? Get another scripture. This is Psalms 141 and 9. Psalms 141 and 9. Keep me from the snares. Yes, the snares, which are the traps that uh, Esau has plotted for you. Which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity, yeah, the workers of sin, sin upon sin. 10. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst thy wither escape. Yeah, so we're praying that the this devil is able to fall in his traps, and he is right now. Okay, what is the trap? Setting up his new world order. Okay, coming against the apple of Yahweh Shemashai's eyes, coming against the men of the Lord's, calling things a disinformation. Okay. So he's he's falling for, for the traps and the snares. Okay, so with that, call Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakadash, Tawada Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai Brakata.